What I'm talking about is everyday cruising catamarans, ones that we can afford. Um, if you can afford the hundreds and thousands or millions it takes for a high performance um, luxury cruising catamaran, uh, but this is more for the um, inexpensive, um, more budget orientated cruiser. A cat's nothing but a modern floating apartment. Can a catamaran sail upwind? Is it even possible? Do they sink? Do they capsize? Are they more expensive to keep in marinas? No, they're more expensive over the long term in regards to maintenance. These are the sort of questions I'm going to answer. Cats always cost a lot more money than the equivalent monohull. Well, kind of yes and kind of no. It kind of depends where you're looking at and what you're comparing. First, you only have to look at the internet to, um, to have a look at all the beautiful cats out there. And, um, but this is not really indicative of, of what's out there. At the more inexpensive end, some good cats to have that are perfectly uh, capable of crossing oceans and giving the owners a wonderful, wonderful time on the ocean where you go to find them. If you're not stuck on the, um, on the plastic fantastic and the modern sort of looking designs and brands, then your options open up quite a lot. There's a lot of inexpensive catamarans, not as many as the monohull. Find them as on multi-hole forums, Gumtree, eBay, places like that. Professional build or home build? Well, the cost of professional build versus a home built boat. With professional build, this gives you an indication of consistency. Um, so if you have a professional built boat in a, in, a, in a range, a production range, it will be consistent throughout the range, well you'd hope so. With a home built, this is going to vary on each boat, you know, as, as the builder has the confidence or the abilities to build a decent boat, to plan and to get expert help in when he needs it. Um, this is reflected in the end product. There's an awful lot of very bad home builts, but there's an awful lot of very well built home builds as well. Um, as to production boats, as I said, this is a indication of consistency. There are a lot of production boats that are consistently bad and there are a lot of production boats that are consistently very, very good and everything else in between. So don't discount home built just because it might have a sort of, you know, a connotation that it's, it's just backyard stuff and is not very good. Um, that's not true at all. There's some beautifully well built um, home built out there, but you will have to sort, you will have to hunt through and find them. <laughs> Catamarans have only been around for a short time. Well, no. Maybe the modern floating sort of every gadget possible, modern sort of you know, sparkly condo that floats on water and has some cloth on it. Um, yes, they've not been around for that long. Sturdy, safe, ocean-going, passage-making catamarans have been around for a very, very long time. Polynesians have been using them for crossing oceans all over the place, from going from one island to the other, from vast distances, close to three and a half thousand years. That's um, unproven and unreliable or unknown. Um, really only applies to modern um, design, sort of production, floating type of catamarans. Catamaran form itself has been around a very long time and is a proven, safe way of, of making passage. Hmm. Catamarans can't sail up when compared to a monohull. Well, that depends who you're comparing and what you're comparing against. Modern catamarans that have um, a design for the charter market, that have floating apartments with everything on it, stable platform. The sails are only there for, for looks, I guess, in some ways, although they can sail plenty well downwind. Yes, they can't sail very well upwind at all. Other types of cruising catamarans, ones that have um, hull shape, are rigged better, have dagger boards, sharp V, they can sail very well upwind. Not talking performance or racing style monos or cruising cats, talking about cruising catamarans versus cruising monohulls. Cruising monohulls and cruising cats, in my opinion, they sort of average out to about the same. Uh, cruising monohulls, generally speaking, don't have taut rigging and racing sails on them. They're older, they're saggy and baggy, and don't cannot sail cl as close to the wind because of that reason. Um, the other reason is that cats to the, um, the end point faster than the mono will, um, and that means it's less time in the water for the wind to push it sideways, which means they don't have to point quite as high um, as a monohull who's been pushed sideways through that water a little bit further, a few more degrees to point. So overall, I think it just, depending what you're comparing against floating condos, don't sail well to windward. There are plenty of cats out there that sail very well to windward. And <laughs> cats are weight conscious. Yes, they are. Um, all boats are weight conscious. People are saying is that you can't load up a cat. Um, 
this is not true, you can load up a cat as much as you like, it's just going to sink further in the water and lose its performance of a cat. It will still be very stable, it just won't go as fast. So that's the sort of loading, you're going to lose the performance if that's what you're worried about. The other one is weight distribution. Sure, if you're on a racing cat or a very high performance cat or a very lightweight smaller cat, yes, weight distribution is something you need to be aware of. But then again, you need to be aware of weight distribution on a monohull as well to look at its lines where it sits in the water and make sure everything's balanced up. It's the same with a cat. The cat has two holes that you have to be more aware of. Are they more sensitive to weight distribution? Yes, more that side, more that side goes up. You know, monoholes all together. You know, a dozen eggs on the left side is not on the right side. You don't have to balance that sort of stuff up. Having two people sit on the port side of a cockpit doesn't mean that the boat's going to lean over. You know, it just doesn't happen that way. Yes, if you're talking about 100 metres of chain on the port side, dive bottles, yeah, compressor and yeah, tender motor, that's probably not the best way. You want to split them up a bit. Just common sense applies, really. Catamarans are more expensive in marinas. That depends. Depends on where you are. In Japan here at the moment, just the length. Other places we've been to, that is sometimes a multiplier of 1.3 or 1.5. And um, there are plenty of places that just don't think of it as an issue. And of course, you're better out on anchor in a mooring. I mean, yeah, marinas are fine, but we find that whenever we hit a marina, we tend to hemorrhage money. It's better to stay away from the land. Twice as much of everything. No, they don't have twice as much of everything. They have two holes and two rudders, I guess, and they have two sets of motors. Well, a lot of cats have two sets of motors, but quite a few also have only one motor. Trimarans will have more, one motor. Uh, cats, depending on what you're buying, will also only have one motor. The cost, yes, they have two holes, two rudders, and two sets of motors, but they don't have two kitchen, two sets of sails, two masts, anything else. It all stays the same. The motors are smaller. You only use one motor at a time, or you try to. 20 hours on the port side, starboard side, switch over. By the time you've done 100 hours on each motor and it needs oil or a fuel fill, that's the equivalent of two 100 hours on a big motor which is two lots of maintenance doesn't really add up to that much more a bit of a non-issue really um, holes anti-foul yeah, there's two holes but they're they're shallower there's not much surface area on them as they are for a monohole depends on the type of monohole you have full length cutaway or one of those things that bolts on and just sticks down like a toothpick you know it just all depends tiara is a big boat sure if she was the equivalent size on a monohole she'd take a very similar amount of paint and preparation. What about haul out? Haul out more expensive? Haul out is more expensive because she's a bigger boat, not necessarily more expensive because she's a catamaran. You don't have the range of places you can go to haul her out. It's quite true, the cats don't generally sink. I'm sure there are cats out there that's, that do sink um, or they sink sort of, you know, they're just, just below the surface of the water which when you're on it doesn't make much difference whether it's at the bottom of the ocean or just at the surface of the ocean and you're getting pounded by waves. Um, I'd rather be on a life raft in both those situations. When it comes to sinking, it comes on experience. With a monohull, you've got one, one skin, one hole, and if you are unfortunate enough to puncture it, or a through hole let, let's go, or a stern gland goes, um, you've got just got to make a decision straight away. There's not much choice. You're going to sink unless you plug that hole immediately, and if you haven't if that hole is buried in behind a bulkhead or some shelving or tanks that you can't get to then you're going to sink there's there's just no option there you have to abandon boat and that decision has got to be made very very soon on it's got to be made almost immediately where's the hole can you get to it can you sh shove a um, inflatable life jacket in there anything like that just to, to stop it and the time to make that decision is very short with a catamaran um, you've got two holes and if you puncture one hole or a through hole goes through or something you have time to fill up and sink that side of the cat so it's going to go down but you've still got one side floating you can try a couple of solutions before things get really bad it's not going to, to actually sink it's my own, my own experience i've had and whenever i'm in a monohull anything goes wrong you've got to make a decision most immediately with a cat i have more time which gives me um, a lot of peace of mind. A cap size or pitch pole, the theory here is that the monohole has a heavy weight at the bottom so it will pop back up again, uh, whereas a cat will just fall upside down and then it, you'll just never get it back up again with waves bashing all over you and it's a very unpleasant experience. A catamaran is a stable craft, it's, it's a raft basically, and the chances, if you've got a boat that can go fast, it's going to be light and carry a lot of sail. That means it's going, it's lost some of its raft characteristics, its stable raft characteristics. A well-designed catamaran in terms of um, safety won't have that issue. Something will break before it falls over and that will be, you know, its masts or its um, sails rip, which is what you want. A slow and stable catamaran is 
stable and a fast and tippy is tippy. Um, and so it's trying to find the balance in between. Most designers try and find a balance in between, but there seems to be an emphasis towards the, the, um, the faster side of things. But on the other hand, if you're going for a heavy um, catamaran that's designed for a liverboard and you know, not designed for performance, it's, not, it's simply not going to fall over. When a monohull leans over and touches its spreaders in the water due to a violent gust of wind or a wave action, that's called a knockdown. The, the idea that it's, you just pop back up again and, and you're fine is just a, it's just a whole lot of bollocks. Um, a knockdown is a violent event. Um, if you've got sails up, then they fill up with water. As the boat tries to right itself, then the mast will break, the sails will rip. Anything that was on the deck that wasn't tied down is overboard. If it was lashed down and not lashed down 100%, it's, it's gone round and broken. Other things will broken itself. Downstairs, the best you'll come out with is a few bruises. What normally happens is that you get broken bones and ribs and um, you know dislocations. It's a knockdown is a serious event, and then you've got the guy on the back. And same with the capsize, only a capsize is a lot worse. Catamarans have an unpleasant motion. Which is certainly different, it's a, it's a catamaran, not a monohull. So it's got two holes that have to push through the water, whereas a mono has one. Um, of course the motion is going to be different. If you're used to a monohull, um, it's going to feel different. Uh, it might even feel unpleasant. Uh, but still, it's just different. If you've never been on a monohull before and you go into a cat, then a cat is what it's supposed to be. It's just not unpleasant or pleasant. It's just what it is. Um, so for me, it's just a non-issue. I actually enjoy the motion of a monohull, um, but then I, I don't have any issues with a motion on a cat either. Motion at anchor, cats kind of have it flat, you know, have it hands down on that one. Cats do roll on in a, at anchor, you know, the idea they just stay perfectly flat is just not true. Um, quite often in a bay you'll get the swell coming in and then you get a current going either side around the bay either side and what that does is it pushes you sideways or to an angle to the swell coming in and the cats will roll, you know, it's just a very slow as it goes up and goes down, it's like this. Um, it's not unpleasant. Um, other than the fact that you're not used to it, so it becomes unpleasant because it's, you're not used to it. But then you just have to look at some of the monoholes in the same anchorage and they're doing their you know, 11 to 1s or the 10 to 2s, um, which are very unpleasant to be on. <laughs> Catamarans are ugly white boxes. Some of these um, modern floating condo-y things, or even some of the older designs, are, are pig ugly. It's, you know, there are plenty of ugly monoholes as well. Again, the modern designs, I don't like the look from the outside. They're okay. They're not that nice. Um, but when you're inside, they're gorgeous. You know, there's so much room, they're light and airy. It's, it depends where you're, looking, where you're looking from. Being on the boat is preferable to being off the boat looking onto it. Some of them are seriously sexy. Even the ones that was it, um, Vagabond have got at the moment. Um, you know, it's just one beautiful looking catamaran from the outside, stunning on the inside, but beautiful from the outside as well. Um, everybody should love their own boat, and that's just, you know, it's a personal opinion whether you find a boat ugly or not. You know, even the ugliest boats have, um, have owners who have loved them. I don't find many boats ugly, most of them um, are beautiful machines. Yeah, hear the comment, well, which would you see yourself sailing off into a, into a sunset? It's kind of a funny thing to say, really, because you're looking at somebody you're looking at somebody else sailing off but the reality is when you're on the boat that's sailing into the into the sunset you don't actually notice the difference that much between a mono and a catamaran sailing into the sunset when you're on the boat in my opinion anyway and as to the best view from a boat well it depends if you're on a mono it's going to be a mono or a cat either way cats are more comfortable well yeah, kind of. This is a no-brainer, really. Um, cats do have a lot more deck space, room to walk around, and it's, generally speaking, it's a stable platform. It's flat. One of the things that's not often mentioned is the actual um, comfort on a passage. So if you're just if you're doing several days passage somewhere um, on a monohull, you're on a you're on a lean, and that is tiring, physically tiring, and then it becomes mentally tiring as well. All the time the monohull sailing in on a lean, even though the motion is sort of predictable and it's, it's, it's comfortable, you're having to physically pull yourself up or push yourself off everything you do. You just want to sit on the, on the couch, sort of leaning back, and then when you want to get up, you've got to pull yourself up. On the windward side, when you're facing down, you've got to use your legs to brace yourself. 
even just moving around it's a constant battle of, of pulling yourself up and getting yourself sorted out and after after a few days it becomes very very tiring it gets exhausting actually catamaran that are is you can get a you can have a shower uh, you can get washed easily um, the pumps are still working because the bilges you know they're flat um, and you, you know if you're sitting down in a shower un underway you can sit down you're not having to brace yourself or leaning or whatever like that it's just nice and easy and you can cook a nice dinner easily without having to be strapped in always hanging on to things and then you can sit down at a flat table and put a glass of you know whatever down and it stays there and knives and forks in china it's all very doable and what that means is at the end of the passage on a catamaran you're already rested you're fed you're clean and you can just go out and sit there with a bottle of wine and just enjoy this the sunset whatever you want to do experience on monoholes coming in is that you drop the anchor you drop the sail then you sort of you know you either collapse and think oh i'll worry about it tomorrow or um or you then start prepping dinner and noise catamarans can be noisy on passage or even on anchor when there's a, a chop in the harbor and that is because quite often you get cats with a low bridge deck uh, which means they're only sort of floating sort of that much off water and so any chop just it's a constant banging underneath and some people get used to it tiare has a high bridge deck clearance and so we never get that noise and i've been on other cats that they are incredibly noisy for some people i guess you can you know you just get used to it and you don't hear it anymore but i found that quite disconcerting so certainly monoholes tend to be quieter depends on the type of um, catamaran you've got whether you've got a, a decent bridge deck clearance or whether you're quite low to the ground and whether you can get used to it and sleep through it So, end of the day, cat or mono? Well, for me, it's always going to be a cat. Um, not the high performance, floating apartment style, but more of a simple, easy to maintain, well built, well thought through design that lets me enjoy the ocean and the time I have on it um, are really important to me. And with um, Tiari there, I seem to have found all three. There are always compromises no matter what boat you buy. Um, but for me, um, Tiare being a warm Islander 55 is the, um, is the perfect boat for cruising uh, warmer seas. I certainly wouldn't want to go there in the, in, the, um, in the Arctic or anywhere really cold, but certainly for um, the warmer temperatures, she's a perfect boat for us. I mean, it's nice to go down into a monohull. You feel safe and secure. It's like, a, it's like a cave or a womb of some sort. You feel really comfortable inside. However, I really appreciate the, um, the lightness, the eeriness that a catamaran gives you. Awareness of what's happening outside in the environment, the, you know, the water state or the wind is just, um, I feel a lot closer to the environment when I'm living on a cat. Ooh. Ooh.